In the previous lecture we said that cholinergic antagonists are divided to three groups. The end muscarinic group, which we already discussed. And the other two groups are the ganglionic blockers and the neuromuscular blockers. Today we'll talk about the ganglionic blockers, nicotine and smoking. Ganglionic blockers act on the nicotinic receptors of both parasympathetic and sympathetic autonomic ganglia. Thus, these drugs block the entire output of the autonomic nervous system at the nicotinic receptor. Therefore, ganglionic blockade is rarely used therapeutically, but often serves as a tool in experimental pharmacology. The most important example of this group is nicotine, which is the active ingredient in tobacco. It is found in cigarette smoke combined with the tars and carbon monoxide. Nicotine is second most widely used CNS stimulant after caffeine, and it is second most abused drug after alcohol. In low doses, nicotine causes ganglionic stimulation by depolarization. And at high doses, nicotine causes ganglionic blockade. Nicotine receptors exist at a number of sites in the CNS, which participate in the stimulant actions of the drug. Cigarette smoking or administration of low doses produces stimulation effects that result from increased release of neurotransmitters. For example, enhanced release of dopamine and noradrenaline may be associated with pleasure, arousal and appetite suppression. High doses of nicotine result in central respiratory paralysis. The peripheral effects of nicotine are complex. Stimulation of sympathetic ganglia as well as of the adrenal medulla increases blood pressure and heart rate. Thus, use of tobacco is particularly harmful in hypertensive patients. Nicotine-induced vasoconstriction can decrease coronary blood flow, adversely affecting patients with angina. Stimulation of parasympathetic ganglia also increases motor activity of the bowel. At higher doses, blood pressure falls and activity decreases in both the GI tract and bladder musculature, as a result of a nicotine-induced block of parasympathetic ganglia. Let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of nicotine. Because nicotine is highly lipid-soluble, so it is readily absorbed through the oral mucosa, lungs, GI mucosa, and skin. More than 90% of the nicotine inhaled in smoke is absorbed. Nicotine crosses the placental membrane and is secreted in the breast milk. By inhaling tobacco smoke, the average smoker takes in 1 to 2 mg of nicotine per cigarette. And the acute lethal dose is 60 mg. Clearance of nicotine involves metabolism in the lung and the liver and urinary excretion. Tolerance to the toxic effects of nicotine develops rapidly often within days. It has a lot of adverse effects including irritability and tremors that happens due to the CNS effects of nicotine. It may also cause intestinal cramps, diarrhea, an increased heart rate and blood pressure. And also it may increases the rate of metabolism for a number of drugs. Nicotine represents a serious risk factor for lung and cardiovascular disease, various cancers and other illnesses. So it is not currently used therapeutically, except in smoking cessation therapy. As with the other drugs in this class, nicotine is an addictive substance, and physical dependence develops rapidly and can be severe. Withdrawal of nicotine is characterized by irritability, anxiety, restlessness, difficulty concentrating, headaches, and insomnia. Appetite also is affected and GI upset often occurs. The transdermal patch, chewing gum, lozenges and inhalation containing nicotine, such as Nucatrol and Nicorette, have been shown to reduce nicotine withdrawal symptoms and to help smokers stop smoking. For example, the blood concentration of nicotine obtained from nicotine chewing gum is typically about one half the peak level observed with smoking. Antidepressants may also be used to reduce the craving for cigarettes. Lastly you should know that smoking cessation programs that combine pharmacologic and behavioral therapy are the most successful in helping individuals to stop smoking. That's all for this lecture, in the upcoming lecture we will discuss the neuromuscular blockers. Please help me to know if that lecture was useful for you, using like or a comment. You can download the PDF of this lecture from the link down in the description.
Install our Android application and follow us on social media to easily get our newest videos.